The ZX series is the fifth series of Mega Man games, being a direct continuation of the Zero series and its story. As such, Mega Man ZX and ZX Advent has a ton of references to the Mega Man games that came before them. Hopefully, this video will shed light on most of the references the ZX series makes to these games, whether they are obvious or obscure. With that being said, let's get started. Barely 5 minutes into the game, you can find the body of Highlight Orbuckle, one of the 8 Mutos Reploids from Zero 2, during and after the intro stage boss. The Altroid Zero fights him on is also inside some of the trees in the surrounding area. ZX also inherits some elements of the Zero series, like how the Galleons look like variant forces from Zero 4, energy crystals return as currency, the secret disc return, and the combo system does as well. Vit and Ale also hold their arm when low on health just like Zero did. Moving on to the biometals, they're clear-cut references to X, Zero, Parpuya, Leviathan, Fefnir, and Phantom respectively. Model X's ability to use the weapon variable system, a trademark of Rock and X, allows him to form a more complete version of each biometal. Model X by itself has the ability to shoot two charge shots once fully charged, which actually combo into each other like X's dual charge shots from X2. Model ZX essentially has the moveset of Zero from his own series. Moving on to the Guardian's biometals, starting with Model HX. Holding up and releasing a charge attack creates a tornado similar to the fully charged Storm Tornado. Model LX not only has the ability to create ice dragons like its inspiration, Fairy Leviathan, but also ice platforms, which can be used for platforming and move on its own like the fully charged version of Shotgun Ice. Model PX can create a purple shield, reminiscent of Rolling Shield, and lastly, Model FX can create Fire Wave similar to, well, Fire Wave. Moving on to the city area, I've got quite a few things to mention. Firstly, when talking to a girl named Lucia, she'll bring up the fact that she comes from a long line of bakers, stating that her great 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 grandfather learned to bake from an old Reploid. The old Reploid in question is actually Andrew from the Zero series. She actually gives you an endless supply of bread, which recovers 6 health. By moving this truck with Model HX, you'll find a Pantheon staring down at this health canister. And not only that, but to its right is a rusted E-Tank. The Red Striker and the Rush Roadster, based off of Proto Man's Shield and Rush respectively from Mega Man Battle and Chase, make an appearance in the city. What's interesting is the fact that the kids who own these carts wear overalls resembling Mario and Luigi's. These cats that hang out around these trucks are the same cats that can be found in Zero 3's base after using this e-reader card. And now we're on to the reason why I made this video. In the arcade, you can find these two inconspicuous posters. While you may write them off, I somehow realized that these posters are pixel recreations of this piece of Zero 2 artwork and this piece of Zero 3 artwork respectively. I'm genuinely concerned that I was able to recognize this. Moving on to Area D, a lot of the area is a recreation of Mega Man X's central highway, from the crumbling road, to the giant B mechanoloids, and even this small section directly after the first B. To further drive home this connection with Central Highway, you only have Model X when you first explore this part. I wasn't sure if I should include this, so I'm just gonna be safe and do it anyway. Technically speaking, if you're counting Nightmare Zero and Copy X, this is the sixth time that Zero and X has fought in the franchise as a whole. That's it. When looking in the background of Area H, Aztec Falcon can be found, reduced to a simple carnival ride. Good. The mini boss of the area is a giant Met, like the Met Daddy from Mega Man 4. Actually, Area H is an entire theme park based on the classic enemy, with its previously mentioned mini boss, its abundance of Met merch, and the Mets featuring as enemies in the area. Just after the mini boss, there's a large pool of Mega Man themed plushies. These plushies include Fairy Leviathan, Sage Harpuya, Fighting Fefnir, Passy, Pantheon Hunters, the Pantheon Core, Golems, and multiple Cyber Rogues from the Zero series, Male Sakurai, and multiple viruses from the Battle Network series. In Area F3, by using Model FX to destroy these ice blocks, Childra and Rubita's body, one of the eight gentle judges from Zero 3, will be found among the background. After completing four missions, the Guardian base will be raided by Mavericks, similar to how the Resistance base was raided in Zero 1. Onslaught, the song that plays during the raid, actually makes use of the same guitar sample from Zero 4.
During the raid, you'll find this toy owned by a kid named Sardine on the floor. This detail is actually a reference to Zero One, where Alouette also left her own toy on the floor while the Resistance base was being raided. The core of the Guardian base is the CL system, the energy source CL was working on during the Zero series. Cedra, who can be found to the right of the core, will sell you E-Tanks for 200 energy crystals. She states that it's a valuable antique of hers, and its description states that the technology to create it is rather old. The leader of the Guardians, Prairie, is heavily implied to be an older version of Alouette from the Zero series. She has Alouette's signature plushie at her side at all times in the Resistance base. She calls the past leader of the Guardians, CL, Big Sister. In her room, you can find pictures of Zero facing the Pantheon army from the first Zero game, this artwork of CL, and this artwork of Alouette, CL's winter coat and Alouette's clothing, and a group photo of the Resistance members. Alongside this machine, which is a reference to this artwork of CL, you can also find every type of cyber elf in her room. Attacking this plushie of a hacker elf long enough will give you a W can, which first appeared in Mega Man 7. And lastly, during the story, this image of Zero and CL will show up if you're playing as Vent, and this image of CL shows up as well. During the entire game, when entering a boss room, a theme named Fate, Deep Seated Grudge, will begin playing. However, during Serpent's transformation, the entire song finally plays out, revealing that it's a remix of Fate, theme of Wild from Mega Man Zero Four. This meteor attack that Serpent uses in his final form creates flames that look a lot like the Neo Arcadia symbol. And lastly for ZX, the credits are very obviously based on Mega Man X's, with Vent and Air running on the highway, just like how X did after his first outing. And with that, we're ready to move on to ZX X. <laughs> Could y'all imagine if I actually forgot about Area N? Area N is likely a reference to Zero Space from Mega Man X5, and the location of Area N is likely Wild Secret Lab from Zero 3. Disappearing blocks also make their return in this area. If you have Mega Man Zero 3 or Zero 4 linked up with ZX, either from the original method of putting the games in the GBA Advanced slot on the DS, or through the Legacy Collection, you'll earn the right to fight four bosses from the previously mentioned games. Linking Zero 3 will allow you to fight Childra and Rabita, Death Tan's Mantis, Devil Bat Skilt, and Blazin Philzard. While they retain their original moveset, they weirdly enough have new dialogue before the fight begins. <laughs> Linking Zero Four with ZX allows you to fight Fenry Luna Edge, Pegasolta Eclair, Nobleman Drago, and Soul Titanian, who also retain their original attacks. However, due to Soul Titanian's larger room and the lack of the harsh sunlight, her boss fight is noticeably easier. Venture further into Area N, and you'll be confronted by Omega Zero, who's a lot tougher than his Zero Three counterpart. This version of Omega Zero is a lot more aggressive than he is in Zero Three and also gained the ability to heal himself, dragging on the fight. During the battle, the background flickers in and out of the underground laboratory he fought Zero in. His theme is also a remix of Cannonball, called Cannonball Hard Revenge.
After defeating Omega, you can obtain an item called the Mysterious Rock, and after completing the game, it can be repaired into a biometal. Model OX makes Vent and Ale look exactly like Omega Zero, with a purple Z Saber akin to Zero's after the defeat of Storm Owl. It functions exactly like Model ZX, and in its overdrive state, which is infinite, by pressing down in your buster button, depending on your level of charge, you'll use this ground punch from Mega Man X2, Rakuhoha from Mega Man X4, and lastly, Raikoha from Mega Man X6. And for the final reference, holding up and using the saber will allow you to use Zero's iconic Ryujin from X4. Finally moving on to ZX Advent, let's get this out of the way first. Model A was modeled after Mega Man X7's Axel, in everything but story. As stated by Makoto Yabe, character designer for Grey and Ash, if I remember right, Rockman X8 was the latest game in the X series at the time. But Axel himself was still surrounded by mysteries, and we didn't know what his ultimate fate was. It was a cliffhanger. That made it hard to bring his character over to the ZX series. As a compromise, the protagonists in their transform state inherit the symbols of Axel, such as the color scheme and the double guns. It wasn't intended to be the same character, but it took influence from Axel. Model A's forehead gem is also covered by this circular plate, as an allusion to Mega Man X8's ending. Also, this one's a stretch, I know, but Buckfire is a deer with fire abilities, just like Flamestag from Mega Man X2. And this one is likely just coincidence, but the navigator of the hunters is named Nana, just like the navigator from Mega Man X Command Mission of the same name. Something that isn't a coincidence, however, is the fact that the Sage Trinity are named after the classic series scientist, Master Thomas, Albert, and Mikhail, of course taking their name from Dr. Thomas Light, Albert Wiley, and Mikhail Cossack. In the Tower of Verger, Wire Sponge's body can be seen, merged within the vine roots. Another interesting thing about the tower is that its boss, Rose Spark, is a plant-like pseudoroid with electric attacks, much like how Wire Sponge is a plant-like repwood that has a lightning attack. After defeating Atlas and copy Model F, you have to break through three blocks of Ceritanium, a recurring metal in the series. Two examples are the fact that it was used to create classic Mega Man's armor, and that it can also be found in Zero Four, being used to create different chips and materials. The Legion HQ not only has a giant bee mechanoloid that once defeated, falls and destroys the floor, just like Central Highway all over again, but also red beetle mechanoloids that can carry you, similar to the beetle mechanoloids present in Flamestag stage. Also, on the rooftops, there's a platform similar to the minecarts found in Armored Armadillo stage from X1. More importantly, however, is why is it on the roof of a build in the waterfall ruins this robotic tree mini boss will have leaves fall from the top of the screen that the player must dodge similar to Mega Man 2's Woodman moving on to the side quest this is where the references really start in the hunter's den a kid named Chris will ask you to find an image of a legendary superhero by talking to Ray and then talking to Tina she tells you that she already gave it to Chris and he'll give it to you in the form of a secret disc the image itself is actually an image of bad box art Mega Man. After giving Kid enough energy crystals and a legendary pickaxe to clear out this hallway, things get really interesting. In the first room, you'll find an older generation Reploid named Nick, who's the last of his kind. He's willing to sell you E-Tank for 500 energy crystals. After completing a side quest to put shells in the room at the end of the hallway, you can accept a side quest from a girl named Carly to retrieve a rare ancient mechanoloid from the oil fields. The Mechanoloid is none other than the Utaboris from Mega Man X. Carly explains that the oil field was likely an ocean that has now dried out, hinting at the fact that it was the same ocean that Launt Octopus's stage takes place in. The Utaboris itself will sit on the bottom shelf. Later on, after a girl named Amy kicks out Romeo, the guy previously in the room, she explains that the room needs a little bit of greenery, and tells you that you should take a plant from the Legion headquarters. One of the many options is the Poplin from Mega Man Zero Two, but with its color scheme from Zero Four. Why anyone would choose this thing is beyond me. When talking to Sharon, she mentioned that she wants to fill the shelves with comic books and gives you 200 energy crystals to pay for them. There's three options to choose from. The blue book descriptions read, a delightful comedy about a metallic hero who stirs up a storm of electrical communication. As you may have guessed, this is a reference to Mega Man 8, which is called Rockman 8, Metal Heroes in Japan, and its opening theme, Electrical Communication. 
The next book, Colored Green, reads, A story about soccer, where a unique group of robots trade their weapons for balls and go at it. A reference to the greatest soccer game of all time, Mega Man Soccer. And lastly, the Orange Book's description says, An action comic about two talking wristwatches who team up for their greatest adventure in history, referencing the Clockmen from Rockman and Forte, Challenger from the Future. When talking to Ray, a comic book enthusiast, he talks about creating a story about a robot with a folding fan in each hand, but the idea apparently already existed. The robot he's referring to is likely Aircom Man from, once again, Rockman and Forte, Challenger from the Future. Furthermore, Ray gives you a secret disc that he asks you to deliver to his friend, Patrick. Because Patrick doesn't have any way to analyze the disc, however, he lets you keep it, and upon reading the disc, it's a comic book with Chrono Man from Rockman and Forte, Challenger from the Future, on the cover. Also, the Mega Buster can be seen in one of the pages, alongside a robot that looks to be Mega Man. That makes three references to this game, by the way. Saving the best side quest for last, in the Floating Ruins, a girl named Meg will enlist your services to find four antique items spread out around the area, all of them being items from the classic series. In the first area, you'll find the L-Tank from Mega Man 5. Meg explains that they're actually superior to E-Tanks, but never took off like their predecessor. She also talks about a famous story that L-Tanks help drive away gangsters and thugs. The next item is a pinwheel, more commonly known as the Yasishi, a rare item in the Mega Man series ever since Mega Man 1. She explains that pinwheels are expected to generate massive amounts of energy, but for some reason, went unnoticed by history. The third item is an old balancer, the energy balancer from Mega Man 6. Meg explains that while we may take balancers for granted now, a reference to the fact that starting with the X series, balancers weren't necessary to restore energy while not having a weapon equipped. She explains that unused energy would be wasted into the atmosphere, but with the invention of the balancer, robots were not only able to save their energy for later, but it prevented further damage to the air. Lastly, in the final area, you'll find a light bulb, which is actually an energy canister resembling that of the classic series. Meg explains that solar-powered robots would use these to recover their solar cells, but they weren't a necessity of everyday life. She also mentions the fact that due to conflict, energy would be needlessly wasted, sparking global shortages. This is likely referring to the energy crisis that plagued Neo Arcadia. Heading back into the main story, the Ouroboros, the ultimate biometal, resembles Ragnarok from Zero Four, which makes sense seeing how its pieces of Ragnarok fused with Wild Spirit. Not only that, but inside the Euroboros, specifically in the boss room, the glass painting in the background has what looks to be a deluxe galleon hunter, and more interestingly, a blonde woman resembling CL. And lastly, Model Z neutralizing the other biometals and their chosen one, alongside his ambiguous fate, is a reference to the Zero series where he beat the Guardians multiple times, and its ending. And that was all the references I could find in Mega Man ZX and ZX Admin. I had a lot of fun making this video, and it even gave me an excuse to replay two of my favorite games from the series. If you're wondering why I didn't cover Mega Man A, that's because I already made a video that goes in depth about the mini game and everything surrounding it. So if that sounds interesting to you, check it out here or through the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.